So when you hear me speak and the things I say, I'm speaking to my people. We started by talking about the Reverend Jesse Jackson and what he has said in recent yes. days, and I think you have written some rap lyrics that might chime with some of the, the comments that he made. Do you want to air those for us? Sure, sure. This is a piece I wrote for this uh, situation that occurred, so uh, check it out. How symbolic that Jesse Jackson would suggest such tactics and actions, actions that would speak to the great divide and inevitably collide between factions. Because when a statement is deconstructed metaphorically and historically, we find that public castration was a tool used by our white oppressors to instill generational fear, a fear so embedded it transmitted genetically for hundreds of years. This terroristic tactic was used to tame free men to slaves, to establish a chain of dominance and teach Africans to behave, and now this terroristic tactic is being prescribed by civil rights fighters, punch drunk from pragmatic pugilism, swinging wildly at the last round of their relevance, praying to score a knockout. Once technical and tactical geniuses now succumb to sound bites and tech savvy sabotage and subterfuge while failing to comprehend that these aren't just bad bricks, but that the landscapes eroded and the civil right leader is becoming outmoded. But then, metaphorically speaking, the temptation to trim his testes is Jesse's attempt at cutting off the juice. In other words, making it so Barack can't reproduce. Youth, follow. Barack speaks to the youth. His message of change and hope has allowed the Democratic Party to reproduce. And though Barack stands on the shoulders of these civil rights leaders, the youth have no proof. And therein lies the sad, sad truth. There exists a great divide between them and I. Maybe it's post-traumatic stress disorder of being pelted with bricks and sticks, dodging water hoses and German shepherds, fighting for their God-given right to be men and women and cause them to fail and passing on those tales. And despite their dignity during discrimination, it may be that they feel it is their torch to bear, a torch they have failed to share, such that... The divide is so great their own children don't care. I mean, imagine the panic of a man whose life has been based on the ability to generate capital through inequities in race, being met face to face with the exact time and place in space where he'd be displaced. Or maybe, just maybe, it wasn't as deep as all that. Maybe he just didn't care for how Barack's been speaking to blacks and got a little peed old and wanted to cut off the sacks. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> so the action you're referring to is the one where Jesse Jackson talked about cutting off, uh, how can I put this, two matching parts of Barack Obama's anatomy. I think that's where we're coming from. <laughs> yes. Do you think Jesse Jackson would enjoy that? Have you heard it? I think he would because I think he would understand what I'm saying because I try my best not to, you know, speak from one side of the issue. I think that, you know, as a human being, we got to, you know, really kind of open your mind and understand both paradigms and kind of speak honestly about it. So I think that, I don't know if he would really enjoy it, but I mean, he might, he might appreciate it though. Yeah, but I am somebody. somebody. I am black, beautiful, proud. I must be respected. I must be protected. What time is it? When we stand together. What time is it? When we say no more yes to both. What time is it? What time is it?